Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Sons of Anarchy episode review right here on Otaku Assemble. Weekly, as always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Sons of Anarchy episode review. And this is my review of Season 5, Episode 5, entitled Small World. So, first and foremost, my thoughts on the episode as a whole. Once again, another good episode. Um, and one thing I noticed, and I really like, we're, we're seeing it, man. These events that I've been talking about all season long, man. It's starting. To, you, you seeing it? It's starting, man. It's starting. With the exception of, I think, one episode so far. Most of these episodes have been pretty well paced. I see, you know, um, the conflict and whatnot. It's speeding up. The action speeding up. And for those of you all who have seen the preview for next week's episode, what did I say? What did I say about the whole home invasion thing? Didn't I say that was going to come? Didn't I say that was going to come around this time? Remember? What did I say? Go back. Watch my, uh, what was it? My episode one or episode two review. Go back and watch it. Because I said around episode six or seven. Yep. Anywho. So. So those are my thoughts. Pretty much general thoughts on the episode as a whole. Now few things I want to talk about. First and foremost, let's talk about my man Jax because another thing I mentioned earlier that is coming that 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 I see happening, man. I see it unfolding. It, you know, it's you know, it's like it's like I, I feel like a prophet. So much shit that I already called is happening. Jax, remember the comment I made after Opie was killed? Remember what I said about Jax becoming, you know, a much a much colder character you know um, you know uh, shit I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to think of you know more words but 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 pretty much that that's what we're starting to see you know just like Jack said a part of him died with Opie and so the Jacks we're seeing now much more ruthless much much more cunning you know um, much less naive, you know, much less, much, much more cynical in a sense. Um, and yeah, and the whole thing, I mean, for lack of a better term, he's colder. He really is. There's a part of him that's gone. And we saw it in this episode when he killed the, uh, the prison guard. You know, I mean, hell, prison guard's old lady. Tig took her out. Jax didn't give a fuck. And then... Bash dude's brain in with a freaking uh with a snow globe. Played the music and then smiled while he did it. He smiled the entire time that he did it. We're dealing with a, dif a different Jax now. Remember I said it, and we're starting to see it. And guess what? It's only going to get worse from here on out. You see what I'm saying? This 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 isn't the type of event where Jax goes too far and he catches himself and he has to step back. No. No, 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 no. If that does happen, that's only going to happen later. But he, he's only going to progress more in that manner from, from here on out. But before I, but before I, I get done with my discussion of Jax, I do want to comment. Okay, I forget who it was, which one of my, my viewers pointed out the, the thing about Damon Pope being the mentor character for Jax this season. We saw that again this episode. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Every freaking time Damon and Jax are on screen together. I love it. I love it. I, 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 I love it. I love it. You guys know I already like Damon Pope as a character enough as it is. And now that he is in essence becoming less of an adversary and more of an ally. I love it. Who is this? I'll call you back, Dad. Hey, Dad, let me call you back. All right, later. Second time that's happened in a review. Second time, I'm so sorry. Oh, and I love this song, Weatherman by Dead Sarah. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying. So, like I said, I've always liked, I, from Jump Street, I like Damon Pope, okay? 
and as you all know, I was really looking forward of him being, you know, that that conflict, uh, you know, that 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 adversary, that opponent, that conflicting force that Jax and the club needed to overcome this season. However, though, however, I'm curious now with this this sort of alliance, and of course, remember what Jax said in last week's episode. It's temporary. Because, of course, Jax is going to find a way to capitalize off of this. But I'm curious to see where this alliance goes. Is is Jax going to, you know, to stay true to what his original intention was, which where it's only temporary? Or will he grow to actually favor this alliance? Will he actually grow accustomed to it? Um, does Damon Pope have an ulterior motive? How will the club react if Jax decides to take that route? You know, because remember, they voted it on. Hey, man, this was only supposed to be a temporary thing, and now you're talking about doing it for the long haul. How will they react? How will that jeopardize Jax's position? All these things. All these. Also, also, think about it like this. I mean, remember, Jax is juggling a lot of partnerships right now. We saw in the meeting with him, with, uh, with Alvarez, with the, um, I don't want to call him the triad, but, you know, the, uh, the Chinese gang. No, correction, Japanese. They're not Chinese, they're Japanese. My fault. I forgot about that. Uh, because they were the investors in Kara Kara, remember, during season two? Anyway, we saw, the, we saw the head, you know, their head, and then, of course, the uh, homeboy who's taking over the Niners now. And then, remember, they also got the cartel and the IRA. So what I'm saying is... Those are five, Pope included, we're talking about six alliances that Jax has to maintain. So how will Pope's alliance, how will that affect those other five? All of that has to be taken into consideration. I want to find out what's going to happen. Because I'll tell you this, and this is because, just because of a gut feeling I have, especially taking in consideration what Bobby said in this week's episode when they had the vote when Bobby talked about how the tables divided now and that was a very good um, deduction from Bobby and it makes a lot of sense pretty much what I'm saying is this Jax has too much on his plate I think he is slowly but surely getting his head you know underwater he, he's taking on too much Trying to keep the club together, which I'll talk about more in a bit more detail, because another prophecy of mine came true. That's right, y'all need to start calling me Mohammed, because I'm a goddamn prophet. Anyway, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But remember, the, f the, five, the five alliances he already has, plus popes, and trying to keep the club together. I think it's too much for Jax, to be honest. I think it is. So that's pretty much going to wrap up my thoughts about Jax for this week. Um, I do want to talk about Gemma for a minute and the whole thing that happened with her, Nero, Carla. Um, not too much to say about that, except I didn't know Carla was that batshit crazy. I am kind of sad to see uh, Wanda De Jesus' um, character leave the show, because that is a beautiful-ass woman. And... I would watch her every minute she's on camera. Uh, I know that's Jimmy Smith, uh, Smith's um, old lady. So, uh, so Jimmy, if you're watching this review, my bad, bro. But I'm saying, you know, that's a beautiful ass woman you got there. You know, just saying, just saying. Don't kill a messenger. Shit, it's a compliment. God damn it. Be happy. Anywho, so I am a bit disappointed uh, to see her go, especially the way she was written out. Um, and, and to be honest, I would have preferred her written out another way, maybe in a way that could have brought her back for, you know, guest spots, but, you know, actors only get, actors and actresses, you know, they only sign off so many episodes, and I guess there, you know, there wasn't any plan to ever bring our character back, um, I'm curious though, what is going to happen with Nero, because of course we know he's not supposed to to be um, fraternizing with Gemma anymore, you know, that was supposed to go, so, you know, this this recent um, turn of events kind of changes things, so I want to know how that's going to go. 
Oh, and then, man, the thing with her and Wayne, man, I mean, that I didn't see coming. I, I, because I never thought of Gemma and Wayne in that type of relationship, you know? I mean, hell, Wayne's old enough to be her dad. Um, hell, Wayne saw Gemma grow up. I, I always thought there was more of a, a father-daughter relationship there than a lover relationship. That kind of, that did kind of catch me off guard. Um, especially that it was Wayne who was the one harboring on that and not Gemma. Hmm. That was weird. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen with that. Um, okay. And before I get to my final point, the final thing I want to talk about with this review, I do want to make a, a brief mention. I'm a tad bit disappointed about uh, Eli. You know, his conversation with Jax didn't go the way I planned. Um, but remember, it is within Eli's character. Because what did Eli say to Wayne? At the beginning of season four of last season, he said he would never get in bed with Sam Crow. He said he'd never do it. So Eli's hesitant and his resistance and his reluctancy to team up with Jax, even though they both have a common enemy, it it makes sense because remember, that's what Eli planned from Jump Street. Remember, he said he would never ever get in bed with Sam Crow. So he is just pretty much, you know, he's just pretty much making good on what, on his word, you know. Um, like I said, I am disappointed because I would have liked to see Eli and, 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 and the MC team up. But um, that doesn't look like it's going to be a possibility. Uh, and honestly, once again, like I said about Jax, not sure if that's an alliance. I mean, it's an alliance Jax could use. But I'm not sure if it's necessarily one that he needs right now. Um, which is going to bring me to my final thought. And I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound like a douchebag when I say this. But I told you, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm actually going to take an opportunity to pat myself on the back. Because somebody was right about Clay. I called it. I saw the shit coming, man. I saw it, bruh. I saw it, man. And so, dude, when it happened, I was like, no shit, Sherlock. I saw it fucking happening, bruh. The second I realized that it was the, you know, the nomads who had, you know, who had just joined up with Sam Crow, that they were the ones responsible for the fucking break-ins, I knew it had to all lead to Clay. And that motherfucker is on a power play. I mean, dude, just look what he did in the doctor's office. He had a clean bill of fucking health, and then he comes out with, he's still using the oxygen tank, man. It's all a fucking ruse. Dave fucking Pope told Jax, you know, it's an in internal thing, and he told him why. I told y'all, man, Clay is a fucking, that man plotting, man. Y'all sleeping on Clay. I ain't sleeping on him, man. He, he got everybody else fooled. He ain't fooling me, bruh. I saw that shit coming. Um, and yeah, and look, and we saw in the preview for up for the next week's episode, man. You know, the the whole home invasion thing is going to come to a head. But I'm curious about something. I'm curious about something because I got to go back to what Bobby said about the table being divided. Is there or could there be a potential for a civil war in Sam Crow? And I have to believe, I want to say no. And the reason why the reason why I bring this up and the reason why I want to say no is because even though Jax has somewhat of, you know, major, you know, ma this this uh majority uh constituency in the MC, I can already see, you know, loyalties being divided. I mean, of course, you know, you got, you know, the new guys working with Clay, but I mean, Juice, I mean, shit, Juice is falling more and more and more in line with Clay, and I think it has something to do with Juice trying to redeem himself for the bullshit he did last season. I think that has something to do with it. You can kind of already see it. And then you got a few cats that's in the middle. You know, the pro, uh, um, you know, homeboy who was a prospect last season, happy. They're, 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 they're kind of on the fence. 
you know, and then of course Jax has, you know, Chibs, Bobby, Tig. So what I'm saying is this. Now, of course, you know, the reason why I say that, you know, that whole Civil War bit could never happen is because Jax is the one with all the ammunition, you know, at any point in time. Jax can easily let the club know about what, you know, uh, about Clay, you know, of course, you know, the truth about Clay and Piney and, and Opie, uh, the truth about Donna. He could bring that up. He could bring about the truth about uh, of uh, uh, JT, you know, he has a lot of ammunition. But what I'm saying is, Clay knows this. You see what I'm saying? There's gonna, I, I think there's gonna be a lot more political finesse in play. You see what I'm saying? Um, and shit, I'll be dead honest with you. I think before any of this shit blows back on Clay, he'll terminate any of them fucking nomads in a hot second before any of it blows back. They're, they're um, dis uh, expendable to him. You see what I'm saying? They're disposable. So. So I want I want to know what's gonna happen, but it's like I said, man. I called it. I saw it. I saw that shit clear as day, man. I saw that shit clear. Ray Charles could have seen that shit, man. You know. Uh, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up my thoughts on uh, this week's episode. Um. Okay, wait, no. Final thought. The the Terra Auto thing. Want to see where that goes? Cause it appeared to have been a dead end, but I think Terra's gonna make another run at it. So let's see what happens. Anywho, that's gonna do it for my Sons of Anarchy episode review for this week. I want to thank you all for joining me again this week, and in the comments below, let me know what you thought on this week's episode. Um, what to keep an eye out for later this week? I have my uh, episode two review of Arrow. That's gonna be up tomorrow night and I want to thank you all um, who made last week's review a uh, big success success and uh, for those of you all who you know might have checked Arrow out last week and you don't know that I reviewed it you know check out that review and hey those of you all who might be curious to know what I think about the series man hey um, for, I mean, I'm talking about for those of y'all who watch my, my SOA reviews and maybe not my other videos. Hey, man, swing by. Swing, swing, swing back around, man. Swing back around. Um, discussion of the week is going to be up on Friday. That's my free will versus predestination discussion. And Comic Book Hollywood review this week looks like it's going to be Sin City. So, with that being said, I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. This has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief. I'm signing off, and until next time, peace.